What is up? I am Harbor with Extra Credit Design Club, and today we are going to talk about font licensing. Unfortunately, there are no hard and fast rules when it comes to font licensing because each type foundry is writing their own contracts. There is no universal standard for font licensing. The number one piece of advice that I would give beyond anything is to pay attention and read the font licensing agreements from the foundries that you plan to buy fonts from. The last thing you want to have happen is you buy a $15 license because it's an option and then finding out down the road that you're being sued because you really should have bought the $15,000 license option. Now, hopefully I can break down a couple of the common things that you're going to see with font licensing. Like I said, unfortunately, it's a convoluted, complicated business. Back in the day, it was easy. You know, foundries would create type in lead, you would buy the lead letters, and you could use them. However, it was mostly for print, but then web came along. So then foundries offered a license for print and for web. And then social media came along, and Foundries offered a license for social media. And then broadcasting, and Foundries offer a license for broadcasting. And maybe you want it specifically for a logo. There's a license for that. It is a freaking mess. So that is why my advice is to read the contracts. And as you do, look for certain permissions. If it says desktop license, that usually means that you can use it for print. Um, there might be an advertising license if you're running ads on Facebook or web ads in any platform. There might be a license for your website. So if you want to embed a font in your website, that might be a separate license. A license for logos, and the list goes on and on. Another thing to pay attention to with font licensing is the size of the license. So if you are buying a license for a website, it might say you can have up to this many visitors per month to your website, or you can print this many products using the font. Sometimes it will say you can embed the font in X amount of computers. There's all kinds of different metrics to measure the size. Personally, I think the simplest way is by company size. If your company has one employee, cost this. Five employees, cost this. But that's getting ahead of myself a little bit to what I'm going to talk about at the end of this video, which is how I license fonts, how I believe that font licensing should go moving forward in the future. Back to where we were, my second piece of advice, if you have any questions whatsoever, email the type foundry. They are more than happy to help you use their fonts responsibly and legally coming from a foundry owner myself. I hate having to pursue people who are using licenses incorrectly. I assume always that it's innocent and I reach out to them. <laughs> Story time, I once had somebody have the gall. They bought a personal license when they should have bought a big company license and they emailed me and said, hey, can you add additional support to this font? And you know what I did? Because I'm a sucker, I added the support and said, oh, hey, by the way, I noticed you may be using the incorrect license. And you know what they did? They were so kind as to not do a dang thing. But that's just life. <laughs> and I still like to assume the best in people. It helps me stay sane. But I digress because I know that's irrelevant to any of you watching this video who always use fonts responsibly and legally. Now, my next piece of advice comes more as a word of caution. You may, when you are looking for fonts, 
stumble upon websites that look a little bit shifty where they have a zillion free fonts that you can download. You've stumbled upon El Dorado, the city of free fonts. Now, you may think that you're scoring by, you know, buying this free font. But generally, instead of paying with this font for money, you are probably going to pay for it with a computer virus and a stolen identity. Now, I am not your father. I am not going to say, don't do it, it's illegal. I just want to educate you on the consequences of using these mass free font websites. Proceed with caution. And maybe... If your identity sucks anyways, you're trying to pawn it off on somebody else, hey, downloading free fonts might be just the ticket for you. Next, I want to talk about commercial licenses versus personal licenses versus trial licenses. Up until now, I've been talking about commercial licenses. You pay for them, you use them in your company to make money. Very nice. Now, personal licenses are generally less expensive than commercial licenses, and the stipulation does change from foundry to foundry, so again, make sure you read, but generally, you are able to use those fonts for personal projects, projects that don't have financial gain. Generally, you can use them on social media, a lot of the times with the stipulation that in the description or on the post, you tag the type foundry and say which font you are using. Now, those personal licenses are different from trial licenses. Trial licenses, again, you know the theme, vary from foundry to foundry, but how I do it and how most foundries do it is they are entirely free licenses and they are used in work that will not be published in any way, just as a means to see if the font is correct for your design. So if you have a client and you're doing some branding for them and you think, oh, this typeface might be right, but I don't want to have to buy it just to test it, that is what the trial license is for. You would show that work only to yourself, your own eyeballs, see if it works in your design, or to the client, see if they like it. And then, if it gets approved, you would buy the appropriate license. Now, hopefully, you have found this helpful up until this point. Now, I'm going to talk about how I license fonts and a couple other foundries, how they do it in a more simplified way. I'm going to hop onto my website to show you what's what. There's a little blurb here about my ideology, what have you. Now, if you go to commercial license, this is what's included. Super, super simple. This first paragraph covers 99% of the information you are going to need to know. Our commercial license is super simple. License price is based on company size. So if you have one employee, it's going to be this much. Up to five employees, up to 10, up to 20, up to 50, up to 1,000. Unlimited employees. The commercial license is based purely on company size. Nothing to do with web views, products sold, number of computers you're going to install it on. None of that noise. Moving forward, once purchased, it can be used commercially for desktop, print, advertising, web, apps, products, apparel, logos, broadcasting, whatever. You may not alter the font files or redistribute them in any way. That's the only caveat. You may not use the font for any type of software as service that gives access to the font to users outside of company staff and employees. For example, a website like Canva, where they give users the ability or the access to fonts to print their own website, to print their own whatever, that's a no-go. And then, again here, just reiterated, 
the license price is based on the company size of the end user. Now, if you are a big company with 100 employees and you hire a single freelance designer, just one designer to use the font, that designer is not the end user. It is the company that is going to be benefiting from the font. Another type foundry that does their licensing structure in this way is mass driver, mass-driver.com. Beautiful type foundry, very sophisticated, very contemporary fonts, and they have this simple licensing structure based on company size. Just to show you what this font licensing looks like, if I click on Curtis here, I'm going to buy the font. I can choose individual styles. I can choose groups of styles. Let's say I want to get spicy. Select the whole thing. I'm going to buy it dang all. And then you choose, is this an individual, up to five employees, up to 10 employees, an unlimited license. That'll set you down $16,000. And hey, that ain't bad when considering I have seen foundries, and I lie not, charge up to $1 million for an unlimited license. That's a little out of hand, if you ask me. But anyways, there you have it. Shameless plug. If you do want to purchase fonts from thatthattype.com, there is a link in this description below. That That Type is focused on creating high quality fonts at accessible prices. They start at 15 bucks a pop for an individual license. And they good stuff too. They ain't your usual $15 font. As always, I'm Harbor with Extra Credit Design Club, and I'll catch you in the next.